This is not a game. Nope. It's uh, not a game. It's not a game, and you're probably wondering, when, what is it then? Well, what is not a game is what I'm doing right now. What the panel did previously me, and what they did yesterday. It's not a game what you do at your office space. It's not a game when you have a presentation. So what is it then? It's a responsibility that you and I have to take every single time we stand in front of somebody else, transferring a message, delivering a thought and idea. It's not a game. It's not that we go into an office space, we pull the lever, bish, 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 triple seven, jackpot, boom. Everybody understands exactly what I'm talking about. I'm conveying my message the right way, and everybody leaves the meeting understanding totally everything what you told them. It's not a game. It's a responsibility. I have a question. No, I have three questions for all of you in this room. And the three questions are as follows. How many of you, with a show of hands, have ever felt that you're not getting through? Oh, there we go. So you're not getting through. All right. How many of you have ever felt that you are not knowing how to do this, like how to get something through? You have some, oh yeah, look at good hands there, 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 there. And, and here's, here's the kill switch. How many of you have ever felt that you've been nervous to the extent where you drink the amount of water? Oh, what? No hands? What? Really? What? Weird. Oof. I mean, to that extent that you drink so much water that you had to run to the restroom like five times just prior to your meeting, to your delivery. If you have answered yes to one of these questions, I tell you that you are in for around 15 minutes of pure enjoyment that will literally change your life forever. It will change the outcome of your next meeting, your next delivery, your next presentation. Does that sound good? I I'm sorry, I, does that sound good? Oh, finally! What I'm here to tell you, what I'm here to give you, a little aspect out of, is something that has taken over two decades, two decades, 20 years, of experience to boil down, and I want to give you a glimpse, an insight of something that we have created that will benefit you, called the presenter mastery. Meaning that you can become a master in something that the majority of people fear more than death itself. That's communication. So I suggest this. I suggest that you take up your phone right now, because you're going to need it. All the notes you will take will make the total difference. But I feel like we don't know each other. I feel like you don't know each other in this room. So I'm going to humbly ask you to do an exercise just to get you know, things going. So could everybody in the room who have the availability and the possibility to stand up? So could you please stand up? Stand up. Good. Feel good? Everybody feels good? Yeah. Yes, good. Somebody's, yeah, that's nice. All right, so what you're going to do right now is going to be awkward. It's probably going to feel a little bit different, and you probably haven't done it today or yesterday. But what I want you to do now is that you're going to face a person that's next to you or behind you or in front of you. You're going to take out your little paw, and you're going to shake that person's hand and go, Hi, my name is, and this is what I do for a living. All right, go ahead. 15 seconds each. Ah, oh, you, can, you can sit down again. Thank you. So how did that make you feel? 
Good? Was it energizing, mesmerizing? Did that person blow your mind like, oh, oh this super interesting individual to talk to? Here's the thing. What you just did, we do every single day. We communicate with each other. But what really strikes me is that we think that we're very logical creatures on this planet Earth, but we're driven by so much more. This is you. What happened just right now by me observing what you did was that you think you affected the entire brain of the other human you spoke to. But unfortunately, you only, in the majority of cases, affected that logical thinking of that individual. But that's not your driving factor in life. Your driving factor in life is your instincts, and it's the emotion that you get from talking to other people. So what you have done now is that you have talked to the safeguard of your brain. You have talked to the prefrontal cortex, and every time, not every time, but at least nine out of ten times, that prefrontal cortex is going to go, Nein, das funktioniert nicht, da geht nicht, bitte heraus, schweckschmeißen. Which in German means, that doesn't work for me, thank you very much, can you please leave, I'm not interested. You, as a presenter, you, as a human being, delivering some, uh, something to someone else, we need to do one thing, and here's the first note you need to take down. We need to stop doing this, telling people what we do, how we do it, when we do it, where we do it, and to who we do it together with. I can see some people going, oh, yeah, makes sense, I understand that, totally. But what should we do instead? We should talk about... Eh, 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 yeah, yeah, I can see you know exactly the answer. We need to talk about por qué, the why, why we do the things we do, why we work at the place we work. But we have to, when it comes to presentations, remind ourselves why are we doing it for ourselves, but most important, why we do things for other people. Am I making sense? Okay, five people out of everyone is agreeing to this. Nice. I'm going to put you on a challenge with this, or I prefer adventure. I'm going to give you a total of 15 minutes to... No, sorry, <laughs> kidding. 15 seconds to reflect of why do I want to say the things I want to say to that person, and also why is it important for them to listen to what I have to say. And remember, the foundation of what you're going to do is what you do for a living. So the exercise will be 15 seconds, think, oh, why do I want to tell them what I do for a living and why should they listen to what I do? And then after 15 seconds, you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to stand up from your chair, you're going to shake somebody's hand, go, hola! And then you're going to say, what, why, well, what's your name and what do you do for a living? And let that person answer, and then you vice versa. Are you on board? Okay, we're getting there. I'm going to give you 15 seconds of all quietness, starting now. Fifteen seconds is pretty long when somebody is just looking at you, right? And you're supposed to reflect. All right, so now it's time for exercise. I adventure you, and I put you to the challenge, that I want you to stand up. Stand up. Face each other. Put out that paw, going, doot, 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 doot. What's your name? What do you do for a living? Go ahead. If you haven't switched, you can switch.
Thank you so much. You can take a seat again. Thank you so much. See, this is the beautiful part. People don't even sit down when I ask you to. I wonder why that is. Here's the thing. You have just created the biggest reward that you can ever give someone else because you have not spoken logic. You have not spoken instinct. You have created something that is driving us, and that is emotion. So if you have not figured out how to get to other people, you have to focus on the why, because the why creates an emotional stimulus inside of their brain that makes you want to listen. That's the first step for me to give something that will save your life and elevate everything that you need when it comes to your business. You heard this all before, but something specifically happened in this room when you did this, because I could hear it, I could see it, I could taste it, I could feel it. But what exactly what it was took my good friend, my best friend, my mentor and a communication guru named David J. P. Phillips over seven years to find out, studying five thousand public speakers, because he wanted to find out what is it that makes us good. As presenters, what is it that makes us not having as a game and shooting for the best and hoping that everything will succeed? Is that you have not one, not five, not ten, but a hundred and ten core skills, a hundred and ten steps that you can manage and overcome and become the best version of yourself when you speak? Anybody interested in seeing how you look as a human when it comes to 110 steps? Yes, good. We have in the middle. They look like this. So, how many skills do you fulfill when you stand in front of your team, in front of your coworkers, in front of your friends, family, at a wedding, at a party? How many do you think that you are fulfilling in this? An average, around twenty, twenty-five. What happens if you? Elevate to 50, maybe go up to 60 different skills. I would guarantee you things would change. When I was creating this keynote, I was looking to say, what would you benefit from? What would make sense? So I selected the most important number 44. Yep, skill number 44 is number fun functionality, and it comes to gestures. Did you know that a lot of people base their trust in you? Of how much gestures you use and if they're functional, but you're looking at me. I can see the confusion in your eyes. But Alex, what's functional gestures? Well, I'm going to show you, and then you're going to replicate what I'm showing you just to see that you you know understand what it is. Functional gestures is something that emphasizes with your hands, with your body, what your mouth is saying. So now we're going to try this. I'm going to give you two specific ones. First one is called spatial gestures. This is when you show when something grows and something becomes smaller, when something is tall and when, when something is short, or something is moving over time. Let's see this. So, let's practice it together, just for the fun of it, shall we? So, put your hands in front of your chest like this. Yeah. Now make it big. Make it small. Big. Small. Tall. Ah, short, tall, short, tall, short, tall, moving and growing, moving and growing. See your natural born talents at this. Ooh, but I still don't feel that you really got it. Let me show you this. All right, pay close attention to what's going to happen right now. After this keynote. You will elevate to new heights in your communication. You will grow like never before, and you will see how you will reach the peak of your delivery. The next PowerPoint you will have, people will look at it intensely. They will listen carefully. They will enjoy every moment, and they feel happy after going to, after after going out to your meeting. Your next delivery will enthusiastically make people happy. So thank you so much for paying the attention and being here right now.
You could be like, what just happened? He said something, but he showed something else. Yeah, pay attention, pay attention to this sentence. You will always first see what the person is saying before you even hear what the person said. That's how important the functional gestures are. So, saying that, now you know how to get the message out there. Use your hands. Use your fingers. Describe things. Second thing I wanted to give you was another gesture called drawing. So can you please take out your smartphones? Just take out your smartphones. I got you there, didn't I? This is drawing. I only drew a smartphone and the majority of you went like, oh, uh, wait a minute, I'm just going to get my phone ready. Almost everyone. But then we come down to the key thing, the core to this. And that is what the majority of us face more than death itself. And that is publicly speaking this out. I'm going to give you three very quick but crucial advices that will help you tame your nervousness. And if you do this every single time, you will never be nervous to the extent where you can't control yourself. Step number one, are you paying attention? Are you paying attention? Yes. Good. Step one, make a five song playlist. Five songs all need to be connected to a moment in your life that gave you an emotion of euphoria, happiness, empowerment. Because if you do that and you listen five, to these five songs, it's approximately 20 minutes. 20 minutes is the time that you need to start creating that signal substance and hormone that you want to. When I was 10, I became bullied both mentally and physically for almost 10 years. My first song on my fi playlist, five song playlist, is something that took me into a cockpit on an F-14 Tomcat. I was Goose. My driver was Maverick. Whenever I hear the theme song of Top Gun, I become so enriched and so powerful because my brain can't separate what's, what's reality and what's fiction, and neither can yours. So make sure that the song that you listen to creates that emotion that you want to feel when walking out on this stage. Second thing, breathing. Because if we would walk, if I would walk out here with that Top Gun song in my head, I would probably walk out like, yeah, what's up, hey, and people would be like, uh, nope, nope, nope. So what happened just before I entered the stage, I used a breathing pattern of seven over 60. That means seven inhales and seven exhales within 60 seconds. You do this for two minutes, guys, it will lower your heart rate to the extent that you limit the possibility of cortisol, which is your stress-related hormone, to even start getting an ounce of production, ounce of production. And the, <laughs> the final thing is that I want to be, and you should be, as present as you can, walking on at any stage, in the office room or in a big stage like this. So that's when we have to apply the last thing. Our phones, pictures. So take out your phone the next time, becoming present. Look at your, whatever picture that makes you feel love. Take a look at that for two minutes. You create oxytocin, which is the counterpart of cortisol. This makes you more connected with everyone. You will become present to present. That was it. Three simple simple but very effective tools for your communication. But you have to remember this. It's not a game. We, we don't go to lady luck for us to succeed the next time we stand in front of somebody delivering our message. It's not a game. As a final note, it would be so irresponsible of me leaving you with this, because right now your heads are probably going, what's the next step? You scan this one, that is the next step. 
You scan that QR code, it will take you to a, a free training where you will start your journey. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm doing here today and what everybody's been doing for the last two days, what is it? It is not a. It is not a. It is not and has never been a game. My name is Alexander. Thank you so much. Best of wishes. Thank you.